So today's video is about something that's been pretty important for Sue and I for a really long time. Stage 8 is the company that is sponsoring this video. They have provided me with the locking bars and the locking mechanism that I'm going to show you. I wish I had this when I started to be an RVer back in 2017, June. It wasn't more than a couple months later that I discovered a website that I'll show you later when we get in there that talked about all of the uh, loose bolt issues with the gearboxes on not only the Numar and the Tiffin, but some other uh, coach brands as well. What I had to do is I immediately went and checked all of the bolt tightnesses on mine and to my uh, amazement, they were all loose and I was able to tighten them all. I was very happy. I saved the last ones to uh, check on, uh, the ones in the bedroom, which were the most difficult. And guess what? My bolts were loose and my gearbox had been moving around unbeknownst to me and it was broken and it ended up being about a $2,500 repair to fix it. And that's in 2018 dollars. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So if you come over here first, Sue, and show this gearbox. This is my bedroom slide, and this bedroom slide has only one gearbox like this. It's a big oval-shaped gadget, and it has a bolt that goes through here into this hub here. And it's these hubs that are ever so fragile. There's one, two, and then there's one in the top three, four. Why don't you go to the other side of the bracket, Sue? So the bolts that you're talking about keeping tight are these. And you can see that these are relatively easy to get to. And things start to get progressively more complicated when you've got to get the top one on each side. And guess what? This is an easy one to get to. So we're not going to spend too much time looking at that one. Let's go look at a couple of the other ones. Inside here, when we go inside the rig, I'll show you where this gearbox is. And this was the one that was the problem for me. So you can see here, if you look underneath here, uh, I just have a bunch of cogs here. And inside I have the Fred Flintstone cog wheel that uh, engages this. And you would think that they would have put that in a spot that you could get to. Thank God I got Sue and she's able to help me check those bolts. So we're eventually gonna get to the one that's the, actually the easiest to work on, but I wanna show you another one that's really a corker. Sue, here's your Fifi, here's mine. I'll get out of the way as soon as I show this. This full wall slide is actually got two gearboxes, and I don't know if you can get up here and show this, Sue, but there's a gearbox there that you can get at the lower bolts but getting at the upper bolts is a challenge. And it so shortly, we'll go back to the other side and I'll show you what I did and where I'm at right now. I'm actually gonna show you the stage eight product that I recommend the way you fix it and do it right the first time. And the reason I'm showing you how difficult it is to get at these is because I know most of the folks that have the motor homes is the older crowd and we're not exactly the most flexible people on the planet. Mm. So you kind of want to do this, well, you want to do it no times, but you're going to have to do it one time. So do it the right way. Get this product, this kit with all of the bolts, with all of the rings, and I'll show you how it works. And these bars made out of stainless uh, is about 75, 80 bucks per gearbox Trust me, by the time you go through and work on each gearbox, you will want to do it once and have all of the pieces you need right at your fingertips. So let's go down and look at this one. This is the easiest one to get at. Might be the most dangerous because remember, you don't have beryllium, beryllium tool, tools. And when you're working with this to tighten these bolts, if you bridge between this bolt and one of your battery terminals yes. with a ratchet, uh, you're gonna know about it real quick. My recommendation is to cover this with a plywood board and, uh, and or a carpet. 
work the safe way. And I'll talk about what I did. What I have here is Nord washers and I used Loctite and I used brand new bolts. And uh, it has, you know, held together thus far. I'm actually gonna go back and redo this and put these bars in. These bars here, you'll see are designed in two different styles. This one here, when you're putting it on the gearbox, farther away from this shaft here, where you may not need this cutout. And I'm not saying you need this cutout. Stage eight is just smart enough to give you two different styles, because more than likely this gearbox is designed where this shaft coming in there may or may not be symmetrical. And uh, over the years, they've come up with all the different combinations that this apparently does the trick. So the way you do this, when you go to check your bolts, you're gonna have a torque wrench. And I'll show you that when we get to the other side. So you would take out the old bolts. You would take out the old lock washers, which are totally useless. Then uh, if you, you could choose to clean up the threads a little bit uh, if you want. But literally, you're gonna use the stage H bolts which you can see is a very special bolt because these are grade five. Uh, they have a nice plating on them and they have this groove cut in them. And that groove is circular. And that allows you to wherever this bolt is gonna, uh, this cap screw is gonna end up radially. When you finally get it in place where you need it, you'll be able to take this uh, clip and slap it in once you have this bar on. Yeah, if I had put the correct bolt in, I would have a groove in it, just like I've got shown here. And if I had that groove and I was putting this bar in the right position and it had the groove in it, when I'm all done and this bar is bridging between here and here, I'd be able to take this snap ring, put this through the groove, and I got news for you. That thing ain't ever coming apart. And it was easy as pie because you took out the old fasteners, you put in the new one, you lined up the hexes, you put the bar on, you put the snap rings on. Everything that you need came in a kit. Now let me show you the monkey business that I went through, what I got here right now, and what a pain it was. So back in the day, remember in June of 2018, the the uh, stage eight invention was not done yet. Now stage eight has been making fasteners for years. They have fasteners up on the space station. They got them in mining, in automotive, in the motorcycle business, all over the place. This kit that we're talking about is just a recent development. So what I had to do is I had to go out and buy a torque wrench which even with the stage eight, you would need two. It's kind of a low foot pounds. Um, I don't want to say what the foot pounds is until I get inside. There's two levels. When you're trying to decide which kit you need, you literally just have to go to the gearboxes you're going to be working on and decide if it's a 9 16 inch wrench that goes on the bolts for your gearbox or if it's a half inch. Now, what did I do? Remember, those didn't exist. I bought the torque wrench, and then I had to go through and get, I, first of all, I had to come up with a technique. Anybody in mechanical engineering knows that lock washers are useless. They're a, they're a feel good for the customer. They're not good for holding any machinery together at all. I did a little deep diving on the internet, some of the engineering, and at the time in 2018 when I did this, the best lock washer was called a Nord lock lock washer. And what it is, is it's a set of washers that has serrations on the side, on the front and the back. You have to keep it as a set because in between where my fingernails here is a little ramp. And that ramp uh, actually increases the width 
of this assembly when there's rotation. And when you tighten this up to the right uh, torque, and I also used red Loctite, which I had to buy, that the serrations on the Nord washer will will dent into the bracket. So the bracket has to be soft enough to take an indentation. This setup at the time when I did it was the best way to do it with lock washers. Now, complication. To use Loctite, which a lot of people that are watching this are thinking, ah, I, I can do it with Loctite. I'm telling you, this doesn't do it. Everybody finds that out eventually. And I did it right because not only did I buy a cleaner to clean the threads before I used the Loctite and before I used the Nordlock, I also discovered that because it's cast aluminum, it's a, a, a very passive metal. And you know, there's some fancy chemistry that's going on with this Loctite. So I bought this SF7649 primer to be able to accelerate the uh, Loctite, that was what I did because I didn't have the bars. Let's go inside and see if we can finish this segment up, honey. All right. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mark, if I put these Stage 8 fasteners on, should I buy one of these shirts? <laughs> of course. I mean, it's pretty awesome, right? So when I get to put my bars in here to redo what I did last time. Here's what I'm gonna have to do. First of all, I'm gonna have to lift this up and you'll see that the Chan man, a different job, had to put these steel bars in here because mm. this cheap wood was bending yeah. after I put a cylinder in that was big enough to help us because we have an extra mattress in here that goes from one to seven, that's foam, to help for sleep apnea. That'll be a different video. But imagine I've gotta take all of this stuff out of here now, and then in the back, there's some removable boards that I have to take the removable boards out. And I'm not kidding you, literally back where my hand is right now, the machinery is straight down. And we won't be able to see it here. I have some pictures that I'll splash on screen. We didn't know we were gonna have a YouTube channel, so trust me, I would have taken a lot better pictures back then, but it was not fun. And the day that I'm doing it, I'm gonna to have to really butter up Sue because she's actually gonna be doing it. I'll just empty this, I'll get it ready for her, and then I'll be the master mechanic's helper. Just like last time. Just right, all right. When I first bought this rig, I bought this rig in June of 2017. And lo and behold, the first, one of the first things I find out when I'm on IRV2, and any art new RVer, I gotta tell you that you have to become comfortable with typing into IRV2. That's this website right here, irv2.com, because that's where you're gonna discover the answer to everything that you have going wrong with your RV. Uh, and uh, you can join, it's free to join. Once you join, uh, I, would I would recommend not asking questions because pretty much everything has been asked already. You should just get good at searching. Uh, typically in Google, whatever I want, uh, I wanna write uh, drivers, window, uh, fogging. And then I will leave a space and I'll write IRV2. I won't put .com, I'll just say IRV2. So then the computer will search for art articles and things about foggy drivers, windows on an RV, in particular on IRV2, because that's the only place that's got the preponderance of good quality knowledge. Well, this guy here, uh, Mike Griffin, uh, he has many times made really good articles. And I vividly remember reading this 
and I go, oh man, good. I love an article when it's got really good pictures. And I'm looking at it and I re immediately recognize all this. And uh, oh, and you know, here in the passenger bay and in the power bay, here's the motor. And you'll notice that this is exactly what I just showed you, you know. And then he shows how to get in and looking underneath the floor here to get to uh, the bed motor. Well, I easily could do this, and I easily could do this, and I easily could get to this motor, and that's what I did right away, and I was real happy, Ken, until I got under here, and that's when I discovered that my bolts were broke. Now, I think if you type in Numar slide-out bolts IRV2, okay, and I press this, and you see all of the different things here, the reason I put this up, I want you to notice something. 2022 Numar uh, London Air loose slide out bolts exclamation point. Okay, surely a disaster waiting to happen. Don't think that just because I have an old 2014 jalopy and you're sailing in here with a you know brand new 22. Anybody that has the style of slide machinery that has these gearboxes that are held in by four bolts has the same issue. And the minute they loosen, when you're not around to notice it, and that gearbox does a little rocking, all it has to do is rock a little bit, and the hub that the bolt is in will break off. Now, this here is an example of an article that was done a while ago with the Camper Report. And they show these bars with the bolts that are included, with the snap ring that's included that slides through the bolt. And it's a little article here, and it talks about the um, you know different you know problems that you have. Here's a good picture of what it looks like eventually installed. You know, if you're a normal person and you have normal agility, I'm here to tell you that probably less than 10, 15 minutes per gearbox, you'll be able to do it. You would think that you could get these on Amazon and, and believe me, you can get any stage eight fastener you want on Amazon, except the slide out motor ones. And they have chosen to just have you work directly with them. There's only two kits to worry about, is go, uh, go under where your gearbox is and measure the wrench and that's the kit you need. One of the reasons why I spent the time to go outside for Sue to show you how difficult the access is, is that there are many folks out there that are uh, really qualified mechanics. They've worked on race cars. They've uh, had airplanes. Maybe they've even had speed bolts, boats. And these are things that had fasteners that have been falling off and falling apart for years. Their typical solution is to tie uh, wires in between the fasteners, and the fasteners have to have a drilled hole through the, the head. This is a standard, uh, well-documented, very efficient way to uh, fasten bolts together uh, to allow them to not rotate apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Here's the caveat. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have the right stainless steel tire uh, tie wire. You have to typically have a spinning tool to be able to tie the wire. And then here's the real corker. You have to know which way to bias to go through before you tie it. The limited amount of access that you saw there would pretty much prove to you that you'd have it would be an immense pain to be able to do that. If you go to the Nordlock wedge lock fasteners, those are the fasteners that I ended up using. And even though they seem to have done the trick, if I would have had the ability at the time to get these kits, I would have got these kits 10,000 times before I did that. Everybody is going to say, oh, well, you know, a nylock nut is good. You can see that this is a nylock nut, and you can see that this match mark here used to be here. And this is called, I think, the Yonker test. 
J-U-N-K-E-R. And it's the standard uh, de facto test. And you'll watch how fast this stuff uh, uh, falls apart. This one happens to be a Nylock insert here. They chart how quickly it comes apart in seconds. Uh, I'm going to just turn it on for a second. You're going to see a chart here with all sorts of different kind of nuts. And you're going to see that they're all simultaneously falling apart. Check this out. So there's a double nut. This is in real time. This isn't sped up. But now they're basically showing you, you know, nothing held together. Every single one of them oh. took off. So, you know, whatever you decide, if you're not using these bars, you're going to end up like that. I think we're all fortunate that Stage 8 came up with this kit to make the repair so easy for you to do. Um, I think you'll be surprised if you go through the effort to climb under your rig, A, to determine how many of these gearboxes you may or may not happen. As the motorhomes have gotten newer and the slides have reverted to hydraulic cylinders, of course you don't have a mechanical gearbox rotating it. But I would be willing to bet that uh, most of even the new uh, motorhomes have at least one or two of these uh, gearboxes. And by having this kit, you'll be able to crawl under there, do it once, uh, and, and be done with it. One and done. Yep. So I guess that's it. Did I forget anything, honey? It was perfect. <laughs>